Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, worshipers of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Elizabeth's bathroom. <laughs> Welcome to Minutes with Jesus. My name is Elizabeth. Yes, this is my bathroom. I really like the lighting in here. <laughs> anyway, we are picking it up right where we left off in Genesis 39. Pretty exciting because we only have 11 chapters left until we finish the book of Genesis. Sorry, I felt like that was a rhyme. Probably wasn't. Anyway, as always, let's pray. Jesus, as we enter into your word, Lord Jesus, be glorified. Father, give me an understanding of your word so that I can help others to understand more in depth. We we'll give you so much thanks, Lord. Thank you that we can be meeting together reading your word. Bless the person who is listening. Amen. All right, Genesis chapter 39 in the NIV Version Bible. I will be looking right on the screen so you can too. All right. Like the screen online, like you can type Genesis 39. Okay. All right. The title is Joseph and Potiphar's wife. If you remember, Joseph had many brothers, got sold to slavery by one of why his brothers who were jealous of him. Let's see what ends up happening to him because in the prior chapter, we didn't talk about him. So it kind of just went to some other news. So let's get back to the old news. Okay. Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Verse Chapter 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Potiphar's, I mean one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, brought him, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. Verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, so he prospered. And he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to him his care. And he entrusted to his care everything he owned. For the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge? He told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted in my care. Sorry, I probably should make him a little bit more manly now that he's handsome and well built. Would you like to, let's, you know, okay. With me in charge, Percy, he told her. My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted in my care. No one is greater in the house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing? thing? and sin against God. You nasty! No, I'm just kidding, he didn't say that. You whore! No, she didn't say that either, but he was thinking all these thoughts in his mind. I'm telling you, I'm just saying. 
Verse 10. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day after day after day after day after day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Hallelujah! I'm telling you, we need men like this. We need men like this. That when the woman says, Come, sin, sin against God, sin against God. They're like, uh, not today, Satan, not today. Verse 11. One day, he went to the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants were inside. That's the alarms going off. The signals. The radar. The sun going to go down tonight. Verse 12. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out the house. Yeah, Joseph, run out that house. Verse 13. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand, and had run out the house. She called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has come to brought to us some sport of us. This Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He has come in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she said, she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. For those of you who don't know, sport is obviously a term for sexual connotation, to mean disrespect, to mean that he is trying to make fooling around with the other woman. Verse 18. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out the house. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. While Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warren. For those who don't know, warren is a supervisor that oversees and makes sure that the regulations of whatever they're in charge of is obeyed. Verse 22. So the warren put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he was responsible for all that was done there. The warren paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in everything, oh sorry, in whatever he did. Wow. I don't know about you, but I thought that this chapter was so encouraging, so encouraging for so many reasons. I mean, one, way to go, Joseph. I mean, basically, a person was begging you to fall into sin, and you stood strong in the love of Christ, for Christ, that you ran out, you suffered consequences that you weren't supposed to suffer. But the encouraging thing is, is that God's favor was over him in it all. You see, sometimes 
it is so hard to do what God wants you to do. And even when you have the strength to do it and you choose God's ways, sometimes it still doesn't feel right because you might receive a consequence. This is to encourage anyone who is in a home that they are the only one who is a Christian. This is to encourage people who in their school, they might feel ashamed to stand as a Christian. And this is just to encourage anyone who at any time is tempted to sin against the Lord, be encouraged. Though you might not be the popularest person doing these things, though you might be the only one standing, God sees. And no, it will not go without his favor upon your life. Now Joseph is in the jail, and what? He becomes in charge. Crazy. But that's how God's love and favor works when he is over your life. So I know I haven't done this in a while, but let's let's end in a prayer. Jesus, as we come before you, thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouraging word. Thank you for being over Joseph's life the way you were. And Jesus, be over our lives in that way. Lord Jesus, whoever is listening right now, we just ask Jesus that that type of favor that you had over Joseph's life, may you put it over their life, may you put it over my life, Jesus. Because you've already given us favor, Jesus. The Lord, stand with us. Make it clear that you are standing with us at all times. Give us the strength to stand against temptation, just as Joseph did. Lord, we give you thanks. Amen. Have a blessed day, worshippers of Jesus Christ. Sorry, I was making that facial expression because I didn't enter the note that I really wanted, but it didn't really matter. But anyway, God bless you.